Havocs. Today we're gonna talk about desktop Pi. It is unlike any other Pi and tries to closely resemble a classic PC functionality and it may even add important new functions like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, remote power on and off and uh, of course locking if you don't want other users to use your computer. It is faster and rock solid when overclocked to 3 GHz. So it runs about 20% faster than a standard Raspberry Pi 5 on 2.4 GHz. Up to 4 or even more SSD drives with one or more PCIe switches provide up to 10 times speed up over a bare Raspberry Pi with an SD card. Another amazing feature is a relatively large RAM which of course depends on what kind of Raspberry Pi you use as a basis for your desktop Pi. I recommend Raspberry Pi 5 with 16GB of RAM because there are a lot of new options if you have more memory. For example, you can run machine learning and AI applications as well as virtualization support. You can run really demanding virtual machines like a virtual machine that runs Windows 11. Building a desktop Pi is so inspiring because you can improve on a classic PC design. Desktop Pi makes it easy to prevent your computer being seized by malicious code while browsing the internet while still providing much more power than a standard Raspberry Pi 5. Though you cannot buy a desktop Pi, you can build one yourself. It is not too difficult and I want to show you how to do it in this video. This is it. This is how Raspberry Pi 5 with 16GB of RAM looks like with no uh, cooler. So this is just the battery assembly I just plugged in here. So everything is... Uh, the only modification that this is for external power on button and this is header for uh, analog window. So this is all. Here it is, how it looks like. You see this extension is actually to connect the circuit to part on through expansion port, but otherwise it's a very nice unit as you can see. My desktop Pi is based on a Raspberry Pi 5 with 16 gigabytes of RAM. But if you already own a Raspberry Pi 5 with 8 gigabytes of RAM, it will probably be almost as good. Though many classic mini PCs only allow for one SSD drive to be installed, Raspberry Pi 5 needs an extension board. You can choose between cards with one M.2 connector, two or four M.2 MK connectors. The later allows you to install up to four SSD drives. However, not all PCIe extension boards are the same. Almost all are based on S Media, SM1182 and SM1184 PCIe switches, which allow for two or four PCIe devices to be connected to Raspberry Pi's one-lane PCIe port. ASM has also produced a newer model of PCIe switch, which is commonly used with classic species. SM2806 enables you to connect up to four PCIe devices, but it also supports Gen 3 standard, which means 983 megabytes per second versus 500 megabytes per second on ASM1100 series. Seed Studio has made a board with two M.2 M key connectors for connecting two SSD drives. And there is also a blueprint for making four-way PCIe switch based on this chip on GitHub. There is also a photo of a working prototype, which is truly amazing. However, if you take a look at many internet stores, unfortunately, this kind of extension card is rare and have to be pre-ordered. Overclocking to 3 GHz also gives your desktop Pi an edge. Raspberry Pi 5's original cooler with a small fan and relatively small cooling ribs is not up to the task. I'm using a much more advanced 52 Pi cooler which is composed of aluminum alloy underboard and cooling ribs with a fan that goes on the top of Raspberry Pi 5's PCB. There is no room for hats or underboards. However, you need a hat or underboard if you want to connect an SSD drive. Or maybe there is another solution. I have an extension board with four M.2 connectors. The only option to mount it was sideways. Therefore, I had to rearrange power supply to be able to do it. My Extreme Raspberry Pi has also got a classic disk that is connected to one of USB 
ports. There is another USB port that is used to connect a sound card with an analog sound input and analog sound output. There are also a number of other devices that I'm not going to talk about right now, but let's rather focus on power supply. Do you think that the original power supply, which can provide at most 27 watts, is enough for all this? The answer is simply no, because if you have four SSD drives and one hard disk and maybe another USB device, then you would have quickly exceeded the capabilities of the original Raspberry Pi 5's power supply. No wonder why a classic desktop PC usually has a much, much more powerful power supply. Let's say 400 watts, 600 watts, 1000 watts. But we don't need this power to run Raspberry Pi 5 with all its add-ons. Except maybe if we need a very powerful graphics card. Currently there are no commercial solutions available yet and drivers are not reliable. So I've decided to skip this part at least for a little while and rather focus on what I actually need. I've decided to go for an industrial 150 watt 5 volts power supply, which is in the same price range as Raspberry Pi's original power supply. The thing that you can connect such a power supply through USB-C port on your Raspberry Pi 5. Maybe. It depends on what devices your Raspberry Pi 5 is going to power. However, powering two or more SSD drives would have surely exceeded its capabilities, as well if you connect an additional hard disk or SSD drive through a USB port. Fortunately, this problem is well known by Raspberry Pi 5 add-on manufacturers. The easiest way to solve it seems to be to root power through the extension board instead of through Raspberry Pi 5. This means that Raspberry Pi 5 gets powered from the extension board, which has, for example, four M.2 connectors and can host four SSD drives. However, there is still a problem where to get enough power from the original Raspberry Pi 5's power supply to run Raspberry Pi 5 as well as all the SSDs. You can uh, instruct the board to require Raspberry Pi 5's PD capable original power supply to provide higher than 5 volt power supply voltage, say 15 volts, and then you can reduce the voltage back with uh, step down voltage regulators to 5 volts, and then uh, in this way you can add an ampere or two. But I've got some comments which were very interesting because many of you complain about using four SSD drives at the same time. Of course, uh, we are not talking about an overclocked Raspberry Pi 5 like the one I'm using, but just a normal Raspberry Pi 5 in a normal configuration with uh, probably the original cooler. And uh, wh what you can guess from this is that the original Raspberry Pi 5's power supply may not be enough or the power regulators on the board, which can provide, for example, 8 amperes, are not sufficient. What is the simplest solution to, to solve this problem? I've simply used a much more powerful 150 watts 5 volt power supply and altered my SSD extension board to be exclusively powered from the 5 volt power supply. This means providing thick enough cables and rearranging the power supply to skip 5 volt voltage regulators. Because the board doesn't work if you connect 5 volts while the voltage regulators are still connected to the power circuit. So you literally have to find paths on the board and connect wires there. At the same time, you have to cut off the voltage regulators. You get some kind of arrangement where the board is powered directly from your power supply. Though you don't need 5 volt voltage regulators anymore, there still have to be 3.3 volt step down voltage regulators, one for each SSD drive, as well as one for the PCIe switch, which also needs 1 volt power supply. To gain even more functionality, I've decided to power my Raspberry Pi 5 through the 40 pin expansion port instead of the USB C port. Port. The later can now be used to power other devices and communicate to them at the same time. It also enables Raspberry Pi 5 to work as a USB device, which is very useful if you are testing any kind of Android advanced software or if you want to share your Raspberry Pi 5's resources like an Ethernet connection, Wi-Fi connection or Bluetooth connection to a classic PC or other Raspberry Pis. Desktop Pi also needs some kind of sound card. It's not mandatory because if you are using a Bluetooth device to connect to your Raspberry Pi, 
okay, then uh, you only use Bluetooth and Wi-Fi interface. But if you want to connect an analog amplifier and speakers, then uh, yeah, then it's better to have a simple sound card. If you're going to buy a sophisticated sound card like Sound Blaster, it may not work. It needs uh, a device driver, which you obviously don't have for Raspberry Pi OS. But if you buy a simple sound card that only represents itself as an output and input audio device, it would simply work because USB standard defines such a device. It will also be recognized by the sound mixer without the need of any kind of special software, which is usually needed to use the sound hats. Watch this video next to learn more. The last topic is Power On Manager. It prevents Raspberry Pi unwanted startups after a power outage and it also allows you to start Raspberry Pi or shut it down remotely. It operates Raspberry Pi 5's external power on button signal as well as it has its own power on and off button for the user. An inbuilt Wi-Fi Bluetooth module allows for remote locking or remote control over the Raspberry Pi. You can control desktop Pi, power state or locking through another Wi-Fi device like a smartphone or another PC with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth interface. If you want to build it yourself, watch this video next. Thank you for watching. Please press like and subscribe buttons if you've liked the video and don't forget about the notification bell. See you in the next video. Bye.